If it's one thing that I agree with the flat earthers on, it's this. Modern day scientists treat the information that they glean as dogmatically as any religion does. They do not consider any idea of what they are doing could possibly be wrong until someone literally proves it to them with their own eyes. They're as bad as the church was. The problem with the flat earthers is that they fall into the trap of binary thinking. If this group over here, these scientists, are wrong about ABC, then we must be right about XYZ. You both can be wrong. And that's the trap they always fall into. A great example is this. 1938, a fisherman pulls this up in his net. It's a coelacanth. Science said it had been extinct for tens of millions of years. But yet there it was swimming around. And of course they had to revise everything. And this is the problem that science today is much like religion. There is no open-mindedness to it, and of course the people that would point that out are just as close-minded as the scientists are, because they construct these elaborate, completely unprovable theories about flat earth, and are just as dogmatic about it as the scientists are about their beliefs. If you want to see something really great, about how God, man plans, God laughs. Read How Wolves Change Rivers. And you'll see the difference between the silliness and the fallacy of man and the grand design of our creator. It's an amazing story about how they reintroduced wolves, and the wolves, of course, preyed on certain things that had been denuding the forest of different plants that brought other animals in, and the banks of the rivers became... Uh, firmed up because different things were growing, and then, of course, the river changed course because of that, and it was it's an amazing read. It really is. Now, here is a great example. This is called the Rakat structure in Africa. A great example of how both science and man can be right, even though they're arguing with each other. Science says that this is a natural formation, and they give some long, drawn-out explanation of um, uplift and volcanic activity and all this. But there's other people that look at this, and there was a story some years ago from Solon and Plato about Atlantis, and it fits everything in the description. Of course, science shoots that down because this is 1,400 feet above sea level, could nowhere have been near water. But we do know that the globe can change drastically. And we've seen this even with the Japanese earthquake, that not the most recent one, but the, the big one, that it moved the shoreline eight feet literally in a matter of minutes. What I'm saying here is that this could have been a natural structure that a group of people found and took advantage of and used technology and engineering to inundate with water and use as a place to live. So they both could be right. It's just a matter of people not being so dogmatically attached to their own belief systems that they lose sight of the truth. It's binary thinking. We talk about this on the training side over at Patreon, but we know that man has the ability to create things that will outlive man. And the evidence of it, even if we were able to bulldoze the entire wall of China, there would still be the footprint of it. We even know that ancient man had the ability to do great, great things. We can see it with our own eyes. No one threw a dart at a map one day and said, yep, that's where the uh, Hoover Dam's going to be. It was a combination of engineering, ingenuity, and geological formation. Why do I say all this? Why did I waste the first five minutes of the video talking about all this? Well, someone came to the channel and left a comment. Uh, Lindsay Lawrence gave me a set of coordinates 
talking about um, looking for this sphinx-like structure. And almost like clockwork, as I was making this video, I'm going to look and see if this will pop up real quick. Someone made this comment just as I was getting ready to record. And it's hilarious. It says, uh, LOL, there's no way a creature of that size could ever have lived on Earth. It's scientifically impossible. Speaking of a video I did on September 2nd about this enormous skeleton. Once again, the religion of science rearing its ugly head. Now, these are the coordinates that the young lady gave me. Now, I've looked at what she believes to be this sphinx-like structure, and from every angle that I have looked at it, it looks like a landslide. Now, the reason I'm doing a video on this, and I have, I have looked at this from every possible angle to see if there's something that I'm missing. Sorry about this. There we go. Depending on angle, it can look like a lot of things. But in the region, she absolutely nailed it. Totally, absolutely nailed it. This is clearly evidence here of a vast civilization that looks like they were the victim of an event that happened very, very quickly. There are all sorts of clear indicators here that they had occupied this region and lived here. Now, one of the first things that I'm going to take you to is over here. We'll show you this three-sided pyramid first. And as you can see, looking at it from one angle, you don't really see it, but as we spin around, you can clearly see this. That this was, it's been damaged over time for sure. But this was clearly hand of man. This is the thing that uh, convinced me. I live, and I've mentioned this before, I live in the St. Augustine, Florida region. And St. Augustine, if anybody's ever been there, is a little city that is very old and is lined with cobblestone streets and paths. See these? Walk on them, drive on them every single day. When you look at this, this is clearly a man-made channel. Clearly, someone has laid cobble to create this water channel here. And it's been damaged over time, for sure. But when you look, you can clearly see the outlines of each rock they laid, each stone they laid. You can see this in the streets of St. Augustine, if anybody's been there. It's almost identical. This is not natural. This is not something that nature created. Someone created an artificial channel here. For what purpose? We don't know. We can think of a thousand different purposes that people would want to move water or put water in different regions, but that's clearly a cobblestone channel. I'm a firm believer that what happened down here to this civilization happened very, very fast. If anybody's ever been uh, someplace where they've seen a waterfall dry up, this is clearly that. This hasn't dried up, per se. And I'm just changing the angle so you can see this better. This was clearly a waterfall that was active at one time and froze literally overnight. Because waterfalls, of course, create these giant pools underneath them, and you can see where the flow of the water has created this bowl. Now, I'm just not really sure, honest to God, what's going on over here, but it looks just freaking odd. We see this all over the place down here.
And what I'm going to show you at the end of the video is going to cement that we're not the first people that's seen this. All right, where are we? All right, once again, what looks like an instantly frozen waterfall. And this is one of those cases where actually staying zoomed out shows it. And I know there's a bunch of dogmatic science worshippers out there going, no, this proves nothing. And that's fine. But this, changing the angle here, will clearly show you an ancient runway. And that's the hard part about doing this in Antarctica is that when you try to do this straight above, now this clearly, when you look at this, is a carved out runway. That of course has had some damage to it, but has a specific endpoint Right here, what looks like here was a structure at one time that had some kind of a path leading to it. Maybe their version of some kind of a flight tower. And you can see standing water all over Antarctica at different places. But not everywhere do you see this. See, a lot of people have come to the channel and said, oh, all of the uh, green that you've shown is the ocean and it's algae and it's mold and it's fungus. This isn't the ocean where I'm showing you here. This is rock and ice and a random patch of green. There has to be spores or seeds of something for things like that to occur. And you can see a whole bank of it up here. Nowhere near the ocean. Here's another bank over here. Clearly, at one time, this was a lush, green, fertile valley inhabited by somebody. Something is very clearly different here. And as we can see, look at the cobbling. These look like hand-cut stones with joints. That needs They need tuck-pointed badly, but it's there. We've seen this before, too. Look at this. Just randomly decides to stop, and there's a bridge here. Ice continues over here. Oh, and look. More cobbling. These stones are too identical and too perfect for this to be anything but hand of man. And it would be a grand project. Don't get me wrong. This is huge, this area. But we've seen that civilizations, ancient ones, have the ability to do this. Over here as well. This clearly looks like it was a seafaring. And this was a civilization. And this is a bank. A launch site of some type to launch craft. Maybe not spacecraft, but watercraft. It's just not, when you look at these structures, they just don't look like random, random avalanches don't happen in this geometric shape. Uh, 
up here. There we go. This was clearly a port or a bay of some kind that had an exit and an entry. Now, as promised, well, a couple more things here. Hold on. Look at the shape of this. Look at how different it is from everything around it. This was clearly an island that was used to maybe direct water traffic. Because you can see the channel of what was a flowing river. And once again, we have structures over here that look like they are hand of man. That are, of course, working with natural formations, just like we do in the modern day. And what would cause these random ridges to form, where we have a water flow and we have two directions? Clearly, these are well-traveled paths, or had been at one time, that left natural scars like we would have today if our society ended, you know, where the Eisenhower interstate system is. Would, even if it got grown over and wasn't maintained for two or three or four hundred years, you would still be able to see that. Now, very close to this, and this is what I was talking about, And this is what I'm sure a lot of you are going to uh, point out, so don't think I'm going to miss it. This is McMurdo Station. Probably the largest presence of humans on Antarctica. I don't think it's any coincidence that they decided to put this here because they saw what we just saw a long time ago. Now I'm going to click an overlay of places and I want to show you something. Here at McMurdo they've got a couple of different things that pop up when you hover over. But let me show you this. This is what they're saying the coffee house at uh, McMurdo Station looks like. Now this could just be a joke. But you can go and do this for yourself. Go find McMurdo, go find the coffee house and click on it. This is the picture. You just can't make this stuff up. So we'll leave it there. I guess we're pushing 20 minutes now. But uh, once again, thank you to uh, Lindsay. I forget your last name, but thank you for the coordinates. I very much appreciate it. Um, revealed a great deal of uh, new information from Antarctica. Like, share, subscribe.